Hello and welcome to my so, uh, part two or uh, response to the community feedback, as I might call it. Um, I posted the previous video as well as in the Star Citizen group uh, on Facebook. So I got some feedback and I got called out for comparing apples to oranges, which I kind of agree with. It was more of a um, rant from frustration than, you know, factual backed up evidence or, you know, uh, good points. So um, I'll try to address it as well as, you know, um, a few other um, arguments made by the community. So I'll just start off here with uh, an apples to apples comparison. Um, you have the Vanguard Warden, a heavy fighter. Um, I'm going off the RSI side here, you know. Um, the Vanguard Warden is actually a heavy fighter. The Harbinger is a bomber, the Sentinel interdiction, and the Hoplite a dropship. So heavy fighter, Vanguard Warden. Okay, I'll put some emphasis on that later while I'm why I'm you know. Um, hammering on that so much so the uh, what uh, each of the variants has something going for it each of them is a long-range capable craft each of them have four fixed size 2 weapons and each of them have a size 5 mount in my opinion the Vanguard Warden has very little going for it in the buck. For its Battlefield Upgrade Kit. I'll come to that in a second here. The Sentinel has a very clear role. It has an EMP. So it's able to disrupt the enemy. And it's able to, with half decent um, armaments, able to finish its target. Then you have the Hoplite, which is a dropship. And for a dropship, it actually has half decent armament. It's, you know, made to drop troops off. Um, it has a little wider ramp, you know, to accommodate for the Marines rushing in or out. So, you know, that makes sense. And if it's engaged, it can defend itself and it still has armor. And then you have the Harbinger, which is the bomber variant, which again, just like the warden, is long range. The harbinger, according to its lore, also has living accommodations, and the harbinger has actually got a little extra armor over the warden, even if it's only the cockpit. But it it has a little extra armor, and it is the bomber. So for a bomber to have this loadout, you know is pretty decent because compared to the retaliator the retaliator doesn't have any forward facing weapons even though it's slightly larger than an andromeda with four size fives but it's a bomber i get that but this bomber here actually has forward facing weaponry which is for a bomber quite adequate um like a gladiator i think um is almost as big as a Hornet, I think, and has a substantially less armament than the Hornet, and they're both quite carrier bound, I think, um, to some extent. I'll get to that later as well. So you have this lineup of ships here, and these three have a really clear role and, you know, can back that role up with some armament. But the Warden, in my opinion, doesn't have more going for it to make it a heavy fighter. I mean, the living accommodations um, basically make it able to be a long range fighter. It's just logical to have that. And in my opinion, the escape pod is not great. You don't win a fight by having an escape pod. I'll uh, elaborate on that now. Um, because the Vanguard is described to come back with little more than one engine and a chart remains of a fuselage. And that makes sense because the Vanguard 
is an expensive ship and it's expensive to operate and it's expensive to buy and parts are expensive so you rather bring it back and not die and in my opinion if you crawl into that escape pod and you manage to escape because it's more likely to be blown up than to actually escape like i'm quite hesitant to see how effective an escape pod would be or you'd have a system right before it blows up to have you thrown out of the ship basically um a vandal will just kill you then and there because you know it's a vandal and any pirate who doesn't care about his reputation or wants a reputation as bad as possible or is just a trollmeister basically will kill you then and there so you're not winning the fight with an escape pod. Now I'll make a comparison, just like you have the lineup of vanguards, you have a lineup of mustangs. You have the starter slash freighter, you have the pathfinder, you have a racer, and you have a light fighter. The light fighter actually has more off offensive armaments than the other variants. It actually has two size two and two size one in contrast to four size one, which is almost twice as much firepower, which makes sense. That's what make, makes it the light fighter. So each one of these has something going for it. it so the Mustang Alpha is basically just a starter. The beta is the Pathfinder, I think it has a bit better um, sensors. And the Gamma is a racer, so it might have a bit more speed, there we go. And uh, a bit more maneuverable, and it has a little bit less armament, which makes sense, because it's a racer. And the Delta, being the light fighter variant of the lineup, has more weapons. You know, uh, along with some rockets even. So that's why it made so much sense to me for the vanguard lineup to have its heavy fighter have more offensive capabilities as well and so th that's where my frustration comes from because if we look at this picture here the size 5 on the nose frankly looks ridiculous in my opinion look how it's mounted you cannot tell me that this is not possible anywhere else in the ship. And I don't care a lot for missiles in my opinion, because missiles miss more than they hit. I mean, that's why they're called missiles, am I right? So going back to this size 5, um, I'd rather have it in a more secure way, because again, this looks ridiculous. Um, I'd rather have it, you know, here, for example, under this quite reinforced, sturdy-looking section of a Vanguard. I mean, everyone knows the center of a ship where its wings are located is most of the time the sturdiest. I mean, it's hella sturdier than, you know, this little section under a cockpit. So why not mount it here, you know, a size 5 on either side? Which makes sense, as it's, you know, the fighter variant of the Vanguards. Again, that's where my frustration lies. And then, of course, here you have the little living accommodation area uh, and, you know, the escape pod. And I even don't mind losing some of the missile capabilities if it means, you know, getting some more offensive armament. I mean, heck, even maybe rework it like a cutlass. Uh, give it a few meters extra if it needs it for the rework and uh, give it a little buff. I even like uh, to see 3 size 3 instead of 4 size 2s, but you know, that's just me. I mean, that's wishful thinking here. But, you know, the 2 size 5 instead of 1 size 5 in such a ridiculous position doesn't seem too far-fetched in my opinion. Especially, com especially not compared to the other variants, which all have a clear role. You know, a bomber, a dropship, and a you know, EMP strike vessel. I mean, again, the Warden is described in the lore as initially developed as a bomber destroyer. But in all fairness, if I'm going to kill a retaliator or a Vandal-esque bomber or a other support craft like a Starfarer or, or whatever there might be flying around, 
behind enemy lines, which the Vanguard is designed to infiltrate and be effective in, I'd rather take the Harbinger, as it's most likely still faster than a Retaliator. It has more armor, so it will be able to withstand the turret fire for longer, and it will be able to give it a taste of its own medicine by taking down and maybe damaging it with some torpedoes, and then finishing it off with nice firepower for a bomber, but not for a heavy fighter. I'd be hesitant to take my Vanguard into harm's way, or the Warden into harm's way, because in my opinion, it's just not that effective as it's described to be. Because, I mean, um, unprecedented striking power just doesn't fit, in my opinion. It's only about 22 to 2400 DPS. Um, a Saber has almost that much. And a um, Hornet has more than that with a flash fire. Um, and moving to speed, um, the Vanger, uh, da, 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 da. impressive top speed, which is also not really adequate enough in my opinion, as a Saber is way, way faster than a Vanguard, which kind of makes sense, but you wouldn't be able to get away in your Vanguard, which on the other side doesn't make sense. Because it's, some call it a boom and zoom craft, but it doesn't have the zoom and it lacks the boom as well. So, you know, that's where my frustration comes from. And I had someone pointing out, coming to the uh, community feedbacks here as well. Um, but if the Vanguard Warden doesn't have a disadvantage, anyone would stand in line to get it. I disagree with that completely. It's a hella expensive craft. So... Even as pledged now, it's really expensive. Way more expensive than a Hornet or, you know, uh, a Freelancer Cutlass or whatever. Um, and in game, it will be really expensive to buy as well, as well as expensive to operate. Because unlike the Hornet, which is a decommissioned military fighter, so it's in abundance and its parts are in abundance and its parts are cheap. The Warden will be quite rare, actually, as it's not officially uh, licensed to civilians from the military, according to the lore. But through a uh, UE pact, it is sort of available, but rare. So, first off, it's extremely expensive to buy. It's way more expensive to operate. Parts would be... I think about 10 times more expensive to buy because they're rare and the repairs would be expensive as well and even just operating it if it has so much fuel it has to come from somewhere so you know refueling it would be expensive making it an expensive craft you know nullifying the argument of everyone would be in line to get one which is again my you know, fair opinion here. And not too flawed analysis of a Samir so myself. Um, and then we come to another argument from the community. But medium fighters like the Saber and the Hornet are carrier bound. No, no, I do not agree with that. They do not need a fucking Polaris strap with a Saber to get anywhere. Or a star fairer for that matter. They have some range. I mean, it's a medium fighter. They're not that small. It's not a Buccaneer or a 100i, for fuck's sake. Even a 100i has a refueling capabilities, by the way. So that's a whole different argument entirely, but it is quite small. So, in my opinion, it shouldn't be too weird to be on other ships, but whatever. I mean, the. Cutlass has it, the Freelancer has it, um, in the lore and in the description the Hornet has it, so if they're going to get rid of it, I'd be quite bummed if I were you as a Hornet owner. But um, no, I don't think the uh, Saber and Hornet would have uh, such a small range. I do think they would be able to jump from a safe system to a system where there's fighting, fight and jump back if they survive. 
So, um, no, I don't think so. And um, even if you want to jump over multiple systems, you could, you know, refuel in a truck stop or, you know, get up a contract with a Starfarer, you know, maybe infringing my um, uh, argument here of no, they're not bound to carriers or support craft. You know, to some extent, they're not completely used. They are not snob fighters by any means. So no, the uh, long range capability of the Warden isn't justifying its lack of armament, especially not compared to its other three variants. Comparing apples to apples here, people. Um, and if that were true, if the Saber and Hornet would be that inadequate of going anywhere, I'd see people opting more for cutlasses and freelancers to go fight, as they have the same forward-facing power as a Saber, four size threes, and they have fuel scoops, tanks, and range. Making, according to that logic, a freelancer or a cutlass more viable as a long-range fighter than either of these. And again, I'm not saying the Vanguard Warden should have the offensive capabilities of Hurricane, be as nimble as a saber, and have the shields and and armor of a Vulcan or a bomber. No, that's that's not what I'm saying here. And I had a other person point out to me um, how the Warden shouldn't be able to be as powerful as an Andromeda. And I ask you, why not? The Warden, again, is a dedicated heavy fighter. The Andromeda is a multi-person freighter. It has four size fives. He even tells me how he likes to dogfight it. I mean, come on, dogfighting a multi-person freighter? Um, because he's able to strike from such a distance with these M7A lasers. Um, that would be about seven kilometers in contrast to the Sabre or Hornet, about three kilometers. Um, and continuing to say how you know powerful it actually is only reinforcing my uh, argument that the warden should be able to do that it isn't that much smaller than an andromeda and it is a dedicated fighter and the andromeda by any means by every means isn't i mean the andromeda has shit ton of cargo it has a snub fighter it has two turrets it has living accommodations it has even more range than a warden so again, by that logic, an Andromeda would be one of the best long-range fighters. So, you know, that argument. Um, I mean, it's it's like saying the, uh, the Saber shouldn't have the same offensive capabilities of a Freelancer, but it actually does. And the size difference between the Saber and the Freelancer is actually comparable to the size difference between the Warden and the Andromeda. And the, again, the Freelancer has four size threes as well as the Saber. So, you know, I don't think my comparison is that weird in that aspect. So, um, if I forgot anything, feel free to, you know, point me to it. And if I um, were really wrong in any way, just tell me and I'd make a response number three or something. I don't know. I'm just, you know, trying to um give my opinion and uh help the balancing and help giving the community something to talk about or think about or cig itself something to think about and i'm just you know trying to make the game better here just like you i mean hell this is my screenshot this is my vanguard and this is my monocle if you can see that i don't know um i really love the game and i want it to succeed and this is basically my contribution to feedback to make it succeed so there you go. It's uh, me out for today. I'll uh, cut it down, edit it, and I'll see you later.